Alright, so I just wanted to throw my thoughts about the um, game we just played. We beat um, Crystal Palace in a very, very good Premier League team. Basically, um, got played by Everett Eze and Chris made him look useless and rather fun, to be honest. Um, played like new, the new sign, John Flip Mateta. Um, John Mayu, yep, both players. No impact in there. So, full credit for a good performance tonight. And that put us 10th in the league. And, well, can't really complain, you know, just come up 10th in the league. Pretty damn good position. And I think we're actually above Arsenal. I think that result took us above Arsenal 10th. And probably above that way, I think. So, not bad after 22 games played. But I just want to think, this is something I've been thinking about for a little bit. I think really as good as you might see. I don't know. So let's, we're going to have a look at this and just see where we're at in this season. And to start with, I'm going to start in goal with Elan Melia. And I'm sorry, but am I the only one who still thinks he's a little bit too young to be our number one goalkeeper? I mean, when you look at some of the other goalkeeping options in the Premier League, you've got Edison at Man City, you've got Allison at Liverpool, and even Aston Villa have got Emmy Martinez, and all of them are a bit older than 25 years old, if not around that sort of market. And that's usually where keepers start to come into their own and develop, and that's when they're starting to hit their peak, and they'll get a good few years before getting to around 34, the reflexes will drop a little bit, and then all of a sudden it's to decline from there. Melia, yes, his youth gives him some good reflexes, don't get me wrong, he's made some good reflex saves, but he's still 21, and that, it, it's just so inexperienced, and it's frustrating, I guess, in a way, because we have a three-time Champions League winner on the bench, like, is that not the person you want in your net? I mean, Sometimes I just wonder what the team like. I look and I'm seeing Melia constantly starting, and yeah, it's probably good for his development, but we have a three time Champions League winner on our bench. Yeah, Kiko, a lot of Kiko see is like thinking, like, if he's won the Champions League three times, like, he's won it more than. <laughs> he's won it more than Allison, he's won it more than Edison, he's won it more than Aaron Martin, he's won it more than the three kids I previously mentioned. What are you doing on the bench for us? Like, I don't know. Like, surely he's a guy who's playing. His CV's probably better than most of the keepers in the league. Like, that is the person you should put in your net. I mean, just look at the goals I've conceded this season. Like, Kiko's only conceded five goals this season. Melia's conceded 38, and th there's no comparison there. Like, Kassia, I think sh I think he should be number one. Like... How can you see 38 goals by this point in the season? Like, we're all ostracizing Jack Butland a while back. Like, he conceded about 12 goals in about four of them. Yeah, that's average three a game. Melia, he's averaging that right now. Like, surely you put Kassir in after that. You know, someone's a bit more experienced. And someone just steadier in there, someone you can trust who's got that experience. Like, Melia is prone to making errors. Ke with Kiko, you, you've got the experience and you can sort of trust that if, and if a mistake does happen, you can trust that it probably won't happen again due to his experience. So, I think Kiko should be in there. And yes, Melia is a good prospect for the future, but you know, if we're serious about you know staying up this season, and maybe even challenging for Europe this season, we are in that little area of the league where we could be the woody both at this point. Like, we could still go down, but we could really still challenge for Europe. I mean, to be honest, we have to completely melt you down, but it won't be past us. But we could easily challenge for Europe. But we need a reliable lad in our net. And with Kiko seeing 33 less goals this season, like, and over his career winning three Champions League, like, surely you put him in net over just some child Essentially, he's barely older than me, Melia. Like, I'm not even trusted with a lot. Anyway, 
Uh, I'm, I'm going to move on from that. So, and you know, back in January, we linked with Jesse Lingard. I don't know how true that was, but we were linked with Jesse Lingard, and there was pundits saying Lingard would be a good replacement to replace Calvin Phillips. And now, after seeing Calvin, uh, Calvin Phillips limp off the pitch, and it, it could be all, oh, it could be nothing serious, it could be something very serious. And I think someone like Lingard, with the amount of Premier League experience he has, he'd have been the good replacement for Calvin. I mean, why didn't we sign him? I mean, after all, he's gone to West Ham, and that's a missed opportunity right there. He's gone to West Ham, and his first game, his first appearance, he scored two goals. Like, how have we not got if If he was available... Surely you just put an offer in. He's an England international. He played at the World Cup and was one of England's better players at the World Cup, actually. Like, why have we not made an offer at least? And now he's above us in the table at West Ham. Fucking West Ham. They employ David Moyes as their manager. Like, how, does, how, just how have we not make an offer? Like, that just baffles me. He, he's in England, he's so many caps, so much Premier League experience, and we haven't got him when he'd be a very good replacement for Calvin Phillips. Like, I, I don't get it. I, I really don't. I mean, already this calendar year, Lingard has more goals than our own record signing Rodrigo. <laughs> well, he's got more goals this season than Calvin Phillips. So, I don't know why we've not made the offer of someone who's got so much potential. A player who's played for England, like Calvin has, but has played more times for England. How have we not? That, to me, that's just a massively like missed opportunity. We we could have had a player like Lingard in our team. I, and just missing out, I, I think that's gonna be a missed opportunity right there. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think we'll, we'd probably be fine without him. But just having that experience, having someone who's been around the Premier League, just to sort of Show our younger and more impressionable players how they should act. Surely you pull someone like that in. Especially when, you know, the older players like Hernandez, he's going to be retiring soon. And the talk of him leaving as well. Like, that's the position that needs looking at. And Lingard would have filled that way. So anyway, I'm going to move on again. And tonight, I'm seeing a lot of love for Cooper. I mean, yeah, it's a mildly good performance, but I mean, what he marched Ben Teke, who hasn't scored in how long, and his goal scoring record is actually worse than really Bamford's last season. Like, I mean, his goal scoring record is actually nearly. I think Bamford in one season could probably match Ben Teke's entire scoring record. Like, well done, he kept track of Christian Ben he kept track of some unknown Palace player. Wearing number 14 shit. Like, well done. Like, do you want to give him a medal for that? He marked two plays out of the game who couldn't hit Susan Bar Susan Boyle's arse with a banjo. Like, why are we giving him so much credit for this? I could have marked Ben Teke out of that game. I could have marked whoever that number 14 was. And whoever else was up front before Ben Teke was supposed to work Ben Teke on. Like, I could have marked them. Like, they lack so much end product, a bit like Rafinha last night, but they lack so much end product, like, just in general. And we're even Cooper credit for marking Ben out of the game? I mean, anyone could have marked Ben out of the game. Like, if you're conceding against them to you, this is a dog shit team in general. Cooper, he, league one standard at best. Like, against good attacking teams like Liverpool, it shows. I mean, you can see these boring one match at Anfield. Like, who does that? Like, fucking Liverpool do that against Man City. Like, even Liverpool can't win at Anfield. How did we go there and see four? Yeah, that's right. Cooper. League one standard. Like, they're shit at Anfield, these We should have got there. And got the points out, but no, Cooper plays and we concede four. Shocker. But, anyways, just into a general Premier League team stuff. Like, I haven't mentioned much about our new signings. 
And so I'm going to start with Robin Cop at the back. And you can see, and already he conceded seven in the first two games. He gave away two penalties in that time. And and even like after that, not even playing for us, playing for Germany, he conceded six in one match. Like, is that not a sign? Like, do you not look at that and think that is pathetic? Wait, like, we, we paid out much, 13, we should have just paid the extra millions and got Ben White back. Like, he gets laughed off the pitch with anyone's, like, Cock, Cock has failed against mild Premier League talent, like, players who are, you know, a bit overhyped and aren't really that good. He, he's collapsed against Jack Grealish this season, Dominic Calvert-Lewis and pierre and Aubameyang, like, they weren't form. Well, at least Aubameyang is. And yet, he's making Aubameyang look good this week. It's just pathetic. Like, what is going on? Like, Ben White would never have let that happen. And then there's Rodrigo. Moving on. Record signing. 27 million on Rodrigo. That's not yet. And past two games, it's been a ghost. I haven't seen him. And, wait, like, he's not contributed to a goal since this. Well, I say not country. He hasn't scored a goal for a supposed international level striker. Hasn't scored a goal since December. That was two bloody months ago. Like, for a supposed club record signing, that's just abysmal. Like, I don't care where we're playing him on the pitch. If you are a record signing at 27 million, you need to score goals. We expect you to score goals. In the past two games, he's been a goddamn ghost. Like, what is he even doing on the pitch? Like, I, I don't get it. Then we've got Diego Llorente, another Spaniard, another Spanish international. And um, what is the point? Like, he's just soaking up wages in the treatment room. He's become Adam Forshaw. Like, I'm pretty sure those two are now best buddies. Like, who are also going to talk to? Like, anyone who's fit? No, I still think they've caught up on what the latest thing Ian Pervade has been up to. Like, the, it, I, I'm convinced, like, Laurenti and Forshaw don't even know who some of the players are right now. Like, they're probably just on a, they're just stuck in the treatment room, you know, social distance. And they're just talking about, I don't know what they're talking about, what, their injuries? Like, Laurenti, both times he's played, been laughed off the pitch. I mean, Chelsea, there was an actual crowd, and he got... He got ripped apart by putting Olivier Giroud. Like, Giroud basically needs a Zimmer frame these days. And even he was making Laurenti look awful. And even the Chelsea fans were making a joke out of that. That's just bad enough. I mean, we could have used the wages on Laurenti to sign competent centre backs. You know, like, I don't see Van Dyke playing much these days. Why are you not making an offer? I don't know. He's it, just a. Like, see, that is a rock solid defender who's ever present in Liverpool's defence. Why? Instead, we choose Diego Llorente, and he's... the teams we've been left off against have been coached by Steve Bruce and fucking Frank Lampard. Like, you, you won't catch a Van Dyke doing that. So, yeah, Llorente at this point just seems like a, another big money flop. And then Rafinha, and don't get me wrong. Good piece of skill, right, to send Gary Cale into an early retirement. I could have done that too. I mean, wait, what the hell, like, Jimmy Kebby could have done that. Like, uh, would you all be, like, clamoring his name? So they'll be, like, getting shirts, like, starting up fan accounts in his honour? No. Oh, Rafina's just, he, he, he didn't contribute to that, not according to the BBC. He didn't even register an assist and no got, like, is is a player who's been outscored by Danny Ings this season, and he and Ings has played in, Ings has played a Premier League game this season where his team conceded nine and he didn't score. I mean, how did he see nine in one game and Danny Ings and England National didn't score in that game? Like Rafinha, why did Rafinha do it? What excuse does he have for not scoring at Palace when they are, when they've got Gary Cahill at centre back? 
Cahill has been finished for a few years now. How has Rafinha failed to score for this supposed, like, up-and-coming winger? Like, that's just... I think all the new signs have fallen short in many ways, to be honest. All of them, they haven't... I don't know whether they're not gelled yet, or... I don't know, something's not right, and maybe we've just invested in the wrong areas. I mean, we signed Rodrigo, but it's not Rodrigo to fall, and... I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? But now that I'm going to get controversial, now is the time where I'm going to be very, very controversial. And this style of football that Marco Bielsa has got is playing, it, I'm sorry, I, I hate to say it, but it really doesn't work. I mean, I keep seeing pundits like Gabby Antoine Law saying it, and he's getting criticised wildly by our fans. And why? Antoine has played many times at top level English football. He, like, he knows his stuff. Like, it, like, what have we all done? We've not done that. He has. Like, I think he's probably a more trustworthy opinion here. And now apparently this Argentinian, like, guy, he's come into the game, he's been top level English football for half a year, and apparently, he, like, he knows better than Van Lauder. Like, I don't know. Like, our football this season, our style... We're below West Ham United in the league. Like, that's a team coached by David Moyes. This is, that's not acceptable standard for Leeds United Football Club. We should be above West Ham United, regardless. Like, West Ham United, they are, they are rubbish. Who's the best player? Some Czech Republic lad that pulled from nowhere? That's their best player. Like, who else have they got? There's no one in that team at all. Like, they shouldn't be above us in the league. It's honestly it's criminal that this so called tactical visionary in Marco Bielsa, like, how is he below one of the most laughably bad managers in Man United history? In fact, in the history of the Premier League. Like, do we not see the issue here? Like, clearly Bielsa just, he's a little bit overhyped. Like, surely plays like David Moore plays. Managers like David Moyes, like someone like that. I mean, let's go back to the crawl again. Bielsa got outwitted by John Yemmings in the crawl dugout, and I don't know how true this whole this whole thing is. But apparently, Yemmings was interviewed for the league job the same summer Bielsa, same summer Bielsa. Was. Like, I'm sorry, if Yemmings can manage a team with a literal TV personality playing against us to fix. Three in the net? I mean, I'm sorry, what part of that, like, isn't on Bielsa? I mean, sure, you might say it's a woefully, like, unexperienced squad. He picked those players. He still believed those players were good enough to be Crawley. Evidently not. I mean, maybe on paper they were. And... A lot of the praise this season has been directed with Bielsa getting these players playing, you know, above what everyone thought they would be. But is that not exactly what Jens did for Crawley against us? I mean, those are the league, league two players. Like, some of them maybe even lower standard. I mean, surely, <laughs> surely, if Jens is capable of bridging a League 2 gap to the Premier League standard and getting them to stick three past the Premier League team. Surely he's also capable of getting players to play above their average. So, you know, like, so we've got to ask the question, why didn't we hire Jens in the end? I mean, who knows, he may have even taken us up first attempt. Like, we might even throw a point down to the centre-back, you know, someone who knows how to clear a goddamn corner. Wait, like, I just think, like, Bielsa's biggest thing He's coached these players and he's taken them above and beyond what everyone predicted for him. But Yems did that against Bielsa. Like, does, does that not scream maybe, just a little bit maybe, Bielsa isn't all that we cut him out to be? Especially if John Yems can coach a League 2 team six three past him? Like, that's just... That's ridiculous. And then, I'm, I'm going to end this pretty soon, getting quite a lot. 
but just on this season, the whole like I flashed back to sort of New Year's Eve ish after we beat West Brom, and the whole incident with Karen Carney. Like, what did she say that was so wrong? I mean, she's right. We we've blown up in the past few seasons at the end. I mean, I have didn't take it. I've got all these home games. Obviously not. I am recently because COVID. But I go to these games. And I've seen it explode so many times at the end of the season. I mean, we did it in the season Huddersfield went up. We collapsed. We were top of the league the year after that and then ended up finishing 13th. Then we were top of the league in March and then we ended up blowing up against Derby. Like, like, we've blown up at the end of many seasons. Like, I mean, that's just the habit with Bielsa and his style of football. But like, I'm expecting this to sort of collapse at the end of this season. Because there's only so many keep up that high intensity pressing game. I know there's less games in this season than in the championship, but they have to play to a bit of a higher intensity. So they have to up their level a little bit per game in the Premier League than they're doing the championship to keep up and to compete with these the higher standards of players. So I'm fully expecting us to just run out of steam and burn out. And that could be costly because it's clear that we can't defend. I mean, we're relying on play like Cooper, Cock and Melia to save us like that. And how has that worked out for us? I mean, I know we've thrown a sort of ramshackle defence in a few times, but relying on Cooper, we've already said he's League One standard. Caught, like, two penalties in his first two games while conceding seven, like, and then Melia conceding 38 goals this season, like, and I've already said, there's options on the bench, like Casilla, like again, a bit more of a reliable head in there, in the net. Gaetano Brad is coming back and surely that is someone you put in. I mean, Brad has a brilliant record with Lee. Like, bring him into the defence. And then there's also a young Charlie Casey, like, come on, like, just give them a chance, play them. Cooper, Cock and Melia aren't going to cut it. I mean, we're getting away with it sometimes, but no, we need something more there. And sure, relying on the local talents, great, like Kelvin Phillips, Jason Shacklin, and Stuart Dallas, but money talk, and they'll eventually move on. Like, loyalty is just dead in football. Like, if Marcello Bielsa is truly serious about staying up, he needs to invest in quality players, especially to replace them when they inevitably leave. Like, like Jesse Lingard, who would, would have been brilliant to play to replace Phillips. Like Granite Xhaka, who would probably come in and do a job where Chaplin's involved. And like Napolis Mendy, who, well, he'd be a great option for Dallas as well as, repl- like, as a replacement. Like, they're the players who could keep Leeds up and take us to the next level. Like, that's, that's the level where we should rightfully be. We should be in European spots no matter what. We are Leeds United, like, we shouldn't be languishing halfway down the league. And then, so, I have to say, she was correct. Like, Covid did get us promoted. Without that break in the season, so for us to relax and return against the completely tired out and fatigued other teams, it clearly gave us an advantage. I mean, it also halted what was a slipping, like, dip in form. Like, we were woeful for that break. And then the break came back and we we won on percentage more of our games than we did prior to the lockdown. I mean, that just screams that the lockdown helped us. The break in the season helped us. And to be honest, we should all probably have a COVID-19 shrine in our rooms now for the rest of our lives. Thank you for getting us promoted. So, there's that. Alright, now, I'm going to end the video now and unless... You are completely clueless. I'm going to spell it out here. I am taking the piss. Like, I also don't think any of the things I just said. So, chill out. And that's... Well, I'm assuming this video actually goes anywhere. Or um, the forgotten depth of YouTube. Which is where most of my other videos went. Like, I might make more of these for the other Prem teams. Sort of like... I was not wearing any of the shirts. I'm a little fan, like... I'm not putting on a, I'm not buying an Aston Villa shirt and wearing that shite, I'd rather wear a bin bag.
They, they can tell if they want that. If the seven sort of fans do this, they won't. So it's all fine. It's all fine. No, no one has been offended. Except many Leeds fans, which I know apologise for. I honestly do not think any of the things I just said are bitter. I'm now repeating myself because I'm an idiot. Wait. I could, uh, then again, instead of Snowman Surf Channel, I, me and my friend, we've been talking about making some sort of like gammon podcast, which is essentially going to be, it's a premise kind of like this video I just made, like, we're going to take like the worst take from Leeds fans, like, you know, like the whole League One Liam thing and Barn Door Bamford and shit like that. I'm just going to make a podcast that might appeal to them, but also sort of take the piss out of them. So, like, some people, I saw someone tweet earlier, I don't know, I think I'll be able to find it. I never, I never liked the comment, I don't know what account it came from. But I think someone, I think I saw someone say earlier, Cooper was the worst defender than Matthew Pennington, and to be honest, that person clearly didn't watch Matthew Pennington ever in a lead shirt, because I swear to God, like, it's ridiculous. Also, before I forget, I obviously know player names, like, I'm taking the piss, like, Kelvin Phillips, Jason Shackleton. Like, they're just some things I've heard commentators say. Same with Leeds born Stuart Dallas, and the same with, and I've made up Charlie Case, so it's obviously a combination of Charlie Cresswell and Ollie Case, but like, I was taking the piss out of pundits, if you couldn't tell. And Marcello Bielsa and Marco Bielsa, yeah, that's more the Sky and BT. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful commentary. And just goes to show how much research they actually do on us. Don't worry, I study journalism. I know they don't give a fuck. So, anyway, I hope whoever found this video had some enjoyment in it, and if you probably clicked on the Twitter link from me, then, yeah, um, please don't unfollow me. I am taking the absolute piss here. I'm not going to type it down for probably reasons. I will tweet, and it's obviously going to go on a tweet, I can't just give that away. But, I will say in the description, please watch till the end, <laughs> because... I don't need a bunch of people causing a twist storm on this. Like, if you found some enjoyment in this and you want to see me do this more often, then go ahead. Comment, like, sort of what you want to see. If you want to see me do a, that sort of podcast idea with my friend, that's all good. Like, I'm, I'm downstairs in my kitchen because everyone else is asleep upstairs. But I think I would be willing to do that. And essentially just take the piss out of anyone who actually thinks about this shit I said. But anyway, I hope anyone who found this enjoyed it. Anyone who watched this kind of finds it funny. I don't think I find it funny, but whatever. And if I ever make a video again, which is probably going to be when I can be asked again, then um, see you in the next one. Bye.